Namaste, Dhanava Pranam. By the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Shupad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj, we are here reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 2, The Cosmic Manifestation, Chapter 7, Text 47. Chasvat Prashantam Abhayam Pratibodha Matram Sudham Samam Sad Ashata Paramatma Tatvam Shabdhona Yatra Puru Karakavan Kriharto Maya Paraiti Habi Mukecha Vilajaman Tadvai Padam Bhagavat Paramasya Pumso Brameti Vidhur Ajasra Shukam Vishokam. What is realized as the absolute Brahman is full of unlimited bliss without grief. That is certainly the ultimate phase of the supreme enjoyer, the personality of Godhead. He is eternally void of all disturbances and is fearless. He is complete consciousness as opposed to matter. He un, uh, uncontaminated and without distinctions. He is the principal primeval cause of all causes in whom there is no sacrifice for fruit of activities and in whom the illusory energy does not stand. Purport. The supreme enjoyer, the personality of Godhead, is the supreme Brahman or the sumum bonum because of his being the supreme cause of all causes. The conception of impersonal Brahman realization is the first step due to his distinction from the illusory conception of material existence. In other words, impersonal Brahman is a feature of the absolute distinct from the material variegatedness, just as light is a conception distinct from its counterpart, darkness. But the light has its variegatedness, which is seen by those who further advance in the light. And thus the ultimate realization of Brahman is the source of the Brahman light, uh, as the source of the Brahman light is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Summum Bonum, or the ultimate source of everything. Therefore, meeting with the Personality of Godhead includes the realization of impersonal Brahman as realized at first in contrast with material illusion. The Personality of Godhead is the third step of Brahman realization. As explained in the first canto, one must understand all three features of the Absolute. Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Prati Bodha Matram is just the opposite conception of material existence. In matter, there are material miseries, and thus, uh, in the first realization of Brahman, there is the negation of such material miseries, and there is a feeling of eternal existence distinct from the pangs of birth and death, disease and old age. That is the primary conception of impersonal Brahman. The Supreme Lord is the Supreme Soul of everything, and therefore in the Supreme Conception, affection is realized. The conception of affection is due to the relationship of soul to soul. A father is affectionate to his son because there is some relationship of nearness between the son and the father. But that sort of affection in the material world is full of limitations. When the personality of Godhead is met, the fullness of affection becomes manifested because of the reality of the affectionate relationship. He is not the object of affection by material tinges of body and mind, but he is the full, naked, uncontaminated object of affection for all living entities because he is the supersoul or paramatma within everyone's heart. In the liberated state of affairs, the full-fledged affection for the Lord is awakened. As such, there is an unlimited flow of everlasting happiness without the fear of its being broken, as we have experienced here in the material world. The relationship with the Lord is never broken. Thus, there is no grief and no fear. Such happiness is inexplicable by words, and there can be no attempt to generate such happiness by fruit of activities, by arrangements and sacrifices. But we must also know that happiness, unbroken happiness, uh, exchanged with the Supreme Person, the Personality of Godhead, as described in this verse, transcends the impersonal conception of the Upanishads. In the Upanishads, the description is more or less negation of the material conception of things, but this is not denial of the transcendental senses of the Supreme Lord. Herein also the same is affirmed in the statement 
that the Supreme Lord uh, is pure Shudham, is pure Shudham. The word Shudham indicates that the senses of the personality of Godhead are not made of the material elements. Uh, they are all transcendental, free from contamination of material identification. And also the liberated souls are not devoid of senses. Otherwise, there cannot be any reciprocation of unhampered spiritual happiness exchanged between them in a spontaneous, unbroken joy. All the senses, both of the Lord and of the devotees, are without material contamination. They are so because they are beyond the material cause and effects. As clearly mentioned herein, Sadash Taparam, uh, the illusory energy, uh, the illusory material energy cannot work there, being ashamed before the Lord and his transcendental devotees. In the material world, the sense activities are not without grief. But here it is clearly said that the senses of the Lord and the devotees are without any grief. There is a distinct difference between the material and spiritual senses. And one should, not, uh, and one should understand it without denying the spiritual senses because of material conception. The senses in the material world are surcharged with material ignorance. In every way, the authorities have recommended purification of the senses from the material conception. In the material world, the senses are manipulated for individual and personal satisfaction. Whereas in the spiritual world, the senses are properly used for the purpose for which they were originally meant, namely the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. Such sensual activities are natural, and therefore sense gratification uh, there is uninterrupted and unbroken by material contamination because the senses are spiritually purified. And such satisfaction of the senses is equally shared by the transcendental reciprocators. Since the activities are unlimited and constantly increasing, there is no hope, uh, there is no scope for material attempts or artificial arrangements. Such happiness of transcendental quality is called Brahma Shukyam, uh, which will be clearly described in the fifth canto. Text 48. Sadhyan Niyamyo, Sadhyan Niyamya. Yata yo yama karta hetim Jayus farad iva nipina kanitram indra. In such a transcendental state, there is no need of artificial control of the mind, mental speculation, or meditation, as performed by the jnanis and yogis. One gives up such processes as the heavenly king Indra forgoes the trouble to dig a well. Purport. A poor man in want of a water, a poor man in want of water digs a well and uh, undertakes the trouble of digging. Similarly, those who are poor in transcendental realization speculate on the mind or meditate by controlling the senses, but they do not know that such control of the senses and achievement of spiritual perfection are simultaneously made possible. As soon as one is factually engaged in transcendental loving service of the Supreme Person, the personality of Godhead. It is for this reason that the great liberated souls also desire to be associated in hearing and chanting the activities of the Lord. The example of Indra is very appropriate in this connection. King Indra of heaven is, controlling, is the controlling deity or demigod for arranging clouds and supplying rains in the universe. And as such, he does not have to take the trouble to dig a well for his personal water supply. For him, digging a well for a water supply is simply ludicrous. Similarly, those who are factually engaged in the loving service of the Lord have attained the ultimate goal of life. And for them, there is no need for mental speculation to find out the true nature of God or his activities. Nor do such devotees have to meditate upon the imaginary or real identity of the Lord because they are factually engaged in transcendental loving service of the Lord. The Lord's pure devotees have already achieved the results of mental speculation and meditation. The real perfection of life is therefore to be engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. 
<clears throat> Thus ends our reading for today. We'll continue from text 49 on Friday. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Srila Prabhupada Srila Guru Maharaj Srila Guru Dev Srila Acharya Dev Srila Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the worldwide devotees, Sama Bhaktivedanta Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai Navadvip Dham Ki Jai. Nishrungapali Dham Ki Jai. Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai. Baladev Subhadra Jagannath Ju Ki Jai. Ganga Mai Amuna Mai Ki Jai. Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Giri Govardhan Gupta Govardhan Dham Ki Jai. Sham Kun Radha Kun Ki Jai. Tosi Devi Bhakti Devi Vrinda Devi Ki Jai. Jai Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Jai. Uh, Harinam Sankirtan Yagya Ki Jai, Jai Avir Bhav, Mahamahotsa, Ravon Vishnupad, Paramahamsa, Paravadakacharya, Sri Sri La Bhakti Rachak, Sri Dardiv Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Jai Princeton Bhaktivedanta Institute Ki Jai, Jai Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Institute Ki Jai, Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai, Tadiya Shaka Mat Ki Jai, Nitai Gora Pramanandi, Hari 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 Bo, Dandava Pranam. <clears throat>